Thank you. Deshramastji, so Chris Marlow, thank you for joining Shankarji and I for this evening's uh, Zoom meeting on the 78th Indian Independence Day. Right. Uh, thank you. Pleasure. Very significant. Thank you very much. Um, shall we start this meeting with uh, your recollection? Could we, if we could ask you where you were when you got your realization, your self realization, please, and what was the scenario like? Um, all right, that's a kind of tricky question, actually. <laughs> Not straightforward, unfortunately. No. Um, yeah, I actually I used to work for a, a friend of mine who had a shop in London. I lived in Somerset. Um, and uh, he had some uh, a French lady working there called Chantal. And I knew her quite well. And then one day I came back up to London to, to help out in the shop. And uh, she changed completely. She used to be a bit, you know, like she said, uh, French, you know, les miserables. You know. Um, and suddenly she was all joyful and happy and everything was great. You know. So, And she told me about Sahaja Yoga. And she said, you know, there's this lady. She's an incarnation of the Holy Spirit. I went, OK, that's great, yeah. So, but she didn't tell me very much actually um, about it and she never sat me down actually and sort of you know worked on me or anything like that but when I went back to Somerset um, I just started meditating spontaneously just sometimes I would just suddenly feel absolutely silent inside perfectly peaceful and tranquil <laughs> and uh, I didn't actually realize at the time that it was due to Sahaja Yoga but it sort of went on for a few months, and uh, eventually, because uh, I, I lived near Glastonbury, yeah? which is like all the seekers in the world go to Glastonbury, and there's all kinds of, every kind of thing you can imagine there, you know. But I couldn't find anybody who actually had or was having the same experiences that I was having. So eventually a little voice said, you know, you need to go and find the people who feel the way you do. <laughs> And so I set off sort of on a pilgrimage, packed a rucksack and a guitar, left everything behind and um, headed off to London and went back to the shop, to see my friend Randolph. And uh, there was Chantal and she started telling me again about Sahaja Yoga, you know, this and this. I was going, yeah, this is exactly what I've been experiencing, collective consciousness, you, you can feel how other people feel, you know, inside by putting your attention on them. And you can change the way they feel by, you know, sort of working on them by, you know, stuff like this. So I realized that uh, here were the people who felt the way I felt. And so I just stayed in London and uh, joined Sajoga and still there, you know. <laughs> Remind us the time of, time of the year and when it okay. was. That when she told me it was around uh, I don't know, the middle of summer of 1982, and she actually said, "You should come to this uh, this seminar we're having, you know, in in, in Gloucestershire. You know, this was Cowley Manor." Yeah. I said, "Well, I'm ah. I don't know anything I don't know anything about this thing, you know. I mean, I'm, I don't I think I'd be a bit out of place because I don't know anything about it, you know. It was probably a good thing because Cowley Manor was incredibly powerful." Uh, event, you know, I mean, Shmataji really laid it on the line for the first time that uh, Sahar Yoga wasn't just about meditating, it was about, you know, devotion to her and uh, specifically, you know. So, uh, anyway, so I can place it in the fact that it was about a month before Kauli Manor, um, which I think was uh, August, was it August? About yeah. that time. About that time, yeah. Yeah. So then. Uh, so, what was your first um, meeting with Sri Mataji like? So you get your realization, and then you will, you know, you go and attend the seminar. Was that the first time you saw Sri Mataji? No, I didn't attend the cinema. Seminar. <laughs> it's a point. <laughs> yeah, the okay. first time I saw her, like she she went to India for the winter, you know. So she used to come back around uh, Sahasrara Day. Or maybe Easter mm. at the time. 
So actually, the first time I actually saw her in person was um, at a public meeting in the uh, in a uh, sort of uh, what was it Hackney Hackney Town Hall or something yes. like that. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. And they they met this they set the stage up with this very nice sort of throne and lots of flowers and stuff on the stage. People were there, and she managed to came in and she completely kind of bypassed all the kind of <laughs> arrangements by walking in, not on the stage but below the stage, and she stood actually with the stage behind her, and sort of did the program. You know, just wearing a plain simple white sari as she always did, you know? and. Uh, so that that what should we say? That was quite impressive for the fact that she, you know, <laughs> cut through all the kind of um, pomp and circumstance. <laughs> yeah. So then everybody, people working on her. I think Victor Bertuni was working on me uh, when you know, because he said new people come to the front, and I thought, well, I'm kind of new because I've never seen her before. So I went up to the front, and uh, I got worked on. And she, uh, yeah, she pointed out to people like what their problems were. So, like to Victor, she's going to shoot. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Work on this. What time? Right. What 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 time? And what was the time frame of your the session that you had with Srimadji at this public program? Is it 83, 1983? Yeah, it was around uh, May nineteen eighty three. I think April. April, April 1983, yeah. Okay, fantastic. So, yeah, it was quite nice. At the end of the program, uh, I, I brought a flower because, you know, we all brought flowers. But uh, my usual stance is always to stand at the back of everything, partly because I'm, you know, a few inches taller than everybody else. So <laughs> I'm always embarrassed if I'm at the front because I think nobody else can see anything. You know? So I'm standing at the back and there's a big crush around Shumatiji. So I think, well, there's no way I'm going to get to see her with my flower, you know. <laughs> so I'm just standing there. And Shrataji actually, she said, what about that gentleman, you know? Did he feel anything? And she pointed at me. Mm -hmm. And it's like the, the crowd parted and there was this like corridor. Shrataji was sitting there and it was me with my flower. So I walked up, gave her the flower. And <laughs> she said, did you feel anything? <laughs> Which was a bit tricky because I used to feel a lot actually, but actually at that meeting in her presence, I actually didn't feel anything. That's because my bashudi, that's the vibrations were blocking on my bashudi or something. So I sort of said, "Well, uh, yes, felt something." Yeah, she went, "Okay, fine." <laughs> yeah, so that was the first uh, time. Yeah, but um, yeah. I mean, I think I moved into my first ashram so after about three quite... months, you know, which, um, which was in uh, was in Queens Park. Um, there was a lot of young men there, or they all about eighteen, including sort of Victor and uh, Ian Crawford and Daryl and um, I don't know, sort of, uh, Paul Duncan, people like this, and they they were all musicians, yeah. So, you know, at, uh -huh. uh, uh, after dinner, they'd all kind Very of eat dinner and then get up and go next door and start playing <laughs> playing music. So I did a lot of washing up. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I was the old guy. I was 30 years old, you know. And they were all about 18 or 20. You know. <laughs> so... Uh, anyway, I mean, you've lived in ashrams with young men. You know that they're not very, you know... Not very well trained in the domestic <laughs> arts. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, hmm. so those were the exceptional times where Shramatji would spend so much personal time with the Sahaj Yogis as well as keeping up with the very busy social diary of so CP hosting and attending various functions. What was it like um, being with her? Could you yeah, describe that? Um, okay, one of my uh, first experiences, Mataji had, uh, was, had, brought, had bought this house in Brompton Square and the Sarjogis had worked on it a lot and they were still working on it. 
And uh, somebody said to me, because um, you know, I'm a carpenter, yeah? so they said, could you come and fix some floorboards in uh, in a cupboard in, in Matadi's house? And I went, yeah, okay. Cool. They said, bring some wood with you, you know. So my style, as it was, and still is, and I'm Shanko <laughs> Back to that is that you know I always try and pick up like some wood out of a skiff or something that you know that's uh, being thrown away. You know, wouldn't always try and avoid paying money if you can. And uh, <laughs> I actually have a belief that it's quite uh, auspicious in a way. Um, the word sacred, for example, actually means what's left over. What's what's uh, you know, um, you say the sort of reject stuff. Sacred actually Re means that. Hmm? Because mm. really? what happened, you know the story about the Greek gods and how they, they tricked the gods by giving them all the bad stuff and they took all the good meat for themselves. No? Okay. So the word sacred was what was left over, all the offal, all the stuff. <laughs> Not good. Anyway. Um, and then and, and the fact that the sacrum bone doesn't burn. When you burn yeah. a body, the sacrum bone doesn't burn. It's left over at the end, you know, it's still there. Anyway, so. I found some wood in the skip very conveniently. Oh, this is just perfect for woods. You know, went along there, and uh, so I spent you know a few a couple of hours inside this sort of cupboard under the stairs, fitting these floorboards, and, you know, boards, flooring them down, nailing them down, whatever. And I just had my last piece of wood and my last gaff in the floor there. And I thought, oh, I wonder if this will fit. And I got this last piece of wood I had, and it just dropped in. Perfect fit, you know, like not even a quarter of an inch to spare in any way, you know. And I was just going like, wow, that's amazing, you know. And I was aware and suddenly of somebody standing behind me and Shmataji was standing looking through the door into the cupboard. And she said, how is it going in there? I said, sort of <laughs> 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 what can I say? You know, yeah, very, uh, fantastic. Thank you, Shmataji. Very good. <laughs> So she said, anyway, I think you've spent long enough inside that cupboard, you know, um, you know, time to come and uh, relax a bit, you know. So we all went out and we went into Shumatiji's um, bedroom and there's about five of us and we sat on the floor and so Shumatiji sat with the CP on the sofa and she's sort of very relaxed. She had her sort of hand on his knee and sort of, they were sort of relaxed. And we watched um, a Hindi movie and Shumatiji was explaining the plot to us, you know, what was happening. And uh, so I was kind of going, wow, this is, you know, this is amazing. Just be sitting here, relaxed, watching a movie with strategy. You know, it's very nice. So, she, yeah, she had a, you know, uh, what should we say? A very good way of, you know, putting you at ease, you know, making you feel yes. comfortable. <laughs> like that, yeah. So, yeah, so I went around, I worked. Worked quite a lot on Brompton Square. I went around there for a while. I mean, I was sort of full time for a couple of months, I think, uh, working there. And uh, got a few lessons, you know, cookery lessons and things from Shumatoji at the time, you know, how to, how to chop onions, how to prepare quail. For, um... Could you elaborate <laughs> on those, please? Uh, not very much. I mean, the chopping onions is pretty simple. You know, it's like what everybody does. You know, you... Long or squares, isn't it? Um... Well, you, yeah, you cut it in half and, you know, you, you chop and tail it, peel it, cut it in half, cut it, you know, cut it into slices one yes. way, cut it the other way and cut it slices the other way. But the point is that you can knock off an onion in, in, in about a minute, you know, or less, okay. very quick. Yeah. And you see some people preparing onions, you know, very slowly, and you kind of, oh dear, you, know, you should teach them how to do it properly. <laughs> and little tricks like, you know, you, you get the garlic and you sort of whack it with the back of the knife. You put the knife blade on the garlic and, and give it a thump. Okay. And then, then the skin kind of just falls off. So yes. it makes it really easy to peel. You know, just, you know, little tricks like that. Um, we had we had to prepare twenty four quail. She she was having a dinner party for uh, some of the CP's diplomatic friends, so we uh, we prepared a lot of food, and actually um, that was also quite interesting because uh, I went with her one day. We went in and we went to Southall, so and we did a lot of shopping, bought all the stuff. I was driving the car, 
and uh, she uh, she went to this one particular butcher and she bought a lot of stuff. You know, uh, I say all these birds and meat and sausages and whatever it was. Like. And when we got back to Brompton Square, she said, I was standing there with Terry. Terry was the husband of Nita, an Indian lady, and she was, they were sort of living at Brompton Square. She was humanity's cook. And, uh, but she was a kind of sort of Brahminish kind of thing, something. She had a very, very large bindi. <laughs> And uh, she didn't really like handling meat, so she used to sort of get me to chop up the meat for her. She could, you know, although she might have tried to stop her doing that. <laughs> she wanted to break her conditionings. <laughs> um, yes. But uh, <laughs> anyway, so when we got there, so me and Terry are standing there, and she might have said, put the meat in the fridge, not in the freezer, put it in the fridge. So we both sort of nodded, you know. So I didn't take any notice because Terry was in charge of it. So I didn't think about it. You know. So actually he got it wrong and he put it in the freezer. And for some reason, the freezer got unplugged and, <laughs> and the meat. <laughs> oh dear. Well, I'm not sure if it was, but any strategy said, this meat's actually no good. Take it back to the butcher and tell him the meat's no good. <laughs> you want it all replaced, free of charge. <laughs> It's not the sort of thing I'm good at, you know. It's like I'm rather apologetic usually, you know. And she said, don't apologize, just tell him, you know. Yes, man. Okay. You know. <laughs> so we loaded all in the car and I go to the butcher's <laughs> shop and I walk in with this kind of large amount of stuff and say, this stuff is all off and it needs to be replaced. And the butcher just went, okay. Oh, no. <laughs> and he just replaced it all. And I was going, wow, that is amazing. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't you didn't have to do or say anything, you know, it was just all arranged, you know, perfect, you know. So nice. yeah, so we cooked this this huge dinner and these uh so CP's guests came and you know, we had to go and buy some wine and uh, you know, toilet paper and sort of things that Western people use and stuff, you know. And uh <laughs> and um but there was a ton of food left over. So the next day, Shimataji actually uh, arranged a little Gruha Lakshmi Puja from the Sajogis, all the builders went wow. round and we had Gruha Lakshmi Puja in the front room at Bronson mm -hmm. Square. So we all washed Shimataji's feet. There was probably about 20 of us there, I think. Um, and then we all sat down and ate all the leftovers, which was a huge <laughs> amount of food. <laughs> The, the dining room at Bronson Square was was highly ornate, and it had mirrored tiles on the ceiling um, with some sort of gold filigree design on them. So it made this made this sort of room look twice as big. You know what I mean? Because it's actually fairly low ceiling. It was in the basement, you know, so. mm -hmm. but the mirror made it look huge. But it was kind of strange because you could look up and see everyone upside down eating <laughs> around the table. <laughs> <laughs> Oh wow! That's good. Yeah, incredible. Oh so, yeah, that was uh, that was a nice uh, event. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it was kind of interesting because uh, I think I mentioned uh, on uh, Saturday that um, mm -hmm. you know we used to have puja every Sunday uh, at Charlton Road, eleven o'clock, and we go along. We go along early and we polish all the brass every week, you know, we polished all the brass, you know, where the statues and the talis and the plates and the lamp, everything. And, uh, <laughs> you know, with brasso, you know, which is really smelly stuff, brasso, you mm -hmm. know, it's like smells of kerosene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And <laughs> well, it was funny because uh, later on uh, in India, Shmataji said, you know, this polish you're using it's kind of you know smell is a bit strange you know just just use sort of salt and lemon or something you know so they said oh yes humanity so then of course being human beings they went from one extreme to the other and they just cleaned it with salt and lemon and they never polished it so the all the brassware got more and more dull you know it was clean but it, it didn't have any shine it wasn't polished you know <laughs> so eventually humanity said um you can actually polish it as well sometimes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know kind of, I mean, imagine her, you know, coming on this planet and 
looking at human beings and thinking to yourself, how, how am I going to give them more realization? It's just like, yeah. Yeah. their brain, I mean, the brain is so complex and, you know, extreme. You know. Limited. Yeah. Well, sort of limited, yeah. It goes round in circles, doesn't it? Oh. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah. But uh, so we went to Chelsham Road every Sunday for puja. And uh, after puja, sometimes somebody would stand up and say, um, humanity, you know, this invited like, you know, five people to go to Bronson Square and help to sort of move furniture. If, um, is anybody interested? So I think kind of, is this a trick question? You know, I mean, do I, <laughs> why, why isn't every hand in the room in the air, you know? <laughs> um, but they weren't. It was strange, you know. So most of the time, if you wanted to go, you could go because people weren't actually volunteering that much, you know. So we got to go maybe you know, quite often, and um, you know, you got to know the furniture very well, you know, because one week we'd move the walnut wardrobe from the bedroom upstairs down to the second floor, and then you know, two <laughs> weeks later we'd move it from the second floor back up to the top floor. You know, oh, the, the walnut wardrobe, yes. You know, so. so the point was, she just really wanted to keep us busy, you know, give us something mm -hmm. to do, and uh, didn't want us to just sit around. I remember one uh, time we had gathered at, at Brompton Square, and that, which I think it was the the day after the Ganesha Puja in Brighton, which was an amazing Puja. I don't know, you know that talk? I mean, that's again when Shimantaji really laid it on the line that that chastity was, you know, yeah. absolutely vital, and and what chastity really was, you know, and, and uh, you know, it was such a great talk, you know. So um, the people had gathered there, and some of them had sort of sat down at Shumati's feet and were sort of meditating. And she actually blasted them. She said, "Why are you meditating? Who, you, know, you didn't have permission to to meditate. Who, you know, who said you could come and take my vibrations?" You know. Wow. I, I actually wasn't. I was sort of standing at the back. Sort of. <laughs> I didn't actually feel it was quite right. Apparently, I was right because she really blasted these the, the people who were sort of. You know, meditating there oh. so uh, anyway but then she's talking and she said um she said yes so she said uh you know how was the puja and when you could went that's a good strategy. she said yes I, i'm sorry that you know i had to talk like that but you know it was necessary so i just said something like no she managed you know it was it was wonderful or something and just hardly got the words out of my mouth and something kind of exploded in my heart and i just went into Complete bliss. It was just uh, was amazing, actually. You know, um, and Shumatiji nodded and said, "Oh, we have we got something here." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, that was uh, that was a few times. I mean, a few times in the early days when I came in, there would be times when I, again, that sort of experience. I say, just the heart just exploding with joy. You know. Um, I guess, you know, being English and all that kind of, you know, repressed uh, emotional sort of side, <laughs> you know, was, was being released, you know, um, slowly, slowly. But I remember one, uh, yeah, the Hampstead meeting, Hampstead meeting was our our big meeting of the week, you know, every Thursday, we all went to Hampstead. There would be, you know, at least 100, maybe 200 people at Hampstead, it's packed out. Amazing. And uh, it was an amazing meeting, yeah. And at the end, every meeting, at the end of every meeting, we all stood, we sang Jerusalem and the three great mantras. We didn't sing the three great mantras in those days, because mm -hmm. that didn't start. That was actually started by uh, Hem Lata, I think. Oh, the yes. She sang it at Cabela once. But I believe yes. I believe it was composed by uh, Ravindra Jain. Yes. You know Ravindra Jain, yeah? Yes. I mean, yes. he was an amazing guy, actually. He died a few years back, but... Um, you know, he wrote, you know, Mamta Mai and uh, Anyata Sharanam. Yeah. yeah, terrific. And Chimataji spoke about him, you know, how he really saw things about her which other people hadn't seen, you know, like the fact that other other incarnations had come to establish Dharma, but she'd actually come to, you know, give self realization. Yeah, different that's thing, true. You know, yeah. Um, stuff like that. So, yeah, Chimataji was very keen on him. Uh, he was he was amazing, yeah. 
So I think I'm pretty sure he composed the, the three great mantras in uh, Rag Jajawanti. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Rag Jajawanti, um, yeah. So anyway, so Hampstead meeting, yeah, that was, uh, that was terrific, yeah. Um, so as a, a people, yeah. Hmm? as a seeker, um, how did you, because Sahaja Yoga is very much an internal uh, journey as well as the spiritual journey with the collective. Um, hmm. So in all these years that you've sort of spent with Srimataji and seeing yourself from the early 80s on to now and having written so many books, reading so many scriptures, how would you sort of um, put the <clears throat> spiritual ascent, if 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 that could be? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <tough. laughs> um, I mean, the thing that struck me when I got self realization, I'd been a seeker for, you know, I was 30, yeah, so I'd already done a lot of seeking. I mean, yes. So I understood that actually, you know, there were all kinds of ego trips you can get on, which was very exciting and blah, blah, blah. But what you couldn't find was, was real peace, you know, it's really mm -hmm. solid kind of peace. You know. that, that was the trick. That was what was missing. So when I, my experience was I just suddenly, went absolutely silent and peaceful. You know, I knew this is it. This is, wow, this is it. This is what I've been looking for. And all the, you know, all the scriptures suddenly, you know, sort of, you know, became clear. Because, you know, like Jesus gave a lot of parables where you probably don't know the Bible uh, as well as we do. It's but <laughs> I know it pretty well. Um, yeah. He gave a lot of parables about how there was a man who was a dealer in pearls and, and he discovered this one pearl of great value and he sold everything he had just to get this one pearl because that was the, 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 the real thing and that was the best ever. So you felt, yeah, this is this is this thing, this is it. Everything else, nothing else matters. Everything else has to go compared to that. You know? And, um, you know, I use... Uh, have not yet managed to establish that as a permanent state, unfortunately. <laughs> you know, but um, it's still something I go back to. You know, and uh, yes. I mean, the other day I was on the tube uh, and just feeling quite thoughtless and just sort of, you know, being sort of witness. And um, it's not an empty state, you know, when you when you're when you're in your atma, you know. What I mean, it's. Because actually, you feel that you you feel peace in your nabi, you know, like that. and you feel love in your heart, you know, compassion for everyone else. So it's a kind of it's a very active kind of uh, silence. <laughs> yes, in a way, because it's working. It's working. You're not doing it, but it's working. You know, um, as as you're there. So I guess the spiritual development is. Just learning just to be that, you know. Yeah. Um, that's like Ramana Maharishi says, you know, just be what you are, uh, which sounds terribly simple, but is <laughs> very, it, is very, it is very simple, but hard to achieve, you know. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So, um, so just aim for that, really. Yeah. I mean, my meditation mostly these days is. Uh, just I, I just keep attention on Muladhara Chakra really and uh, say Ganesha uh, Ganesha mantra uh, continuously for <laughs> I don't know how long. Um, but eventually, because Sri Ganesha works everything out, you know, and the Muladhara Chakra yeah. sort of again it solves everything. So I don't really bother with anything else, and then eventually you get sort of in a state where you're connected. In, you know, just Mataji's feet, and you're not saying anything anymore. You just go into the bliss and stuff like that. So it's all very simple. I, I don't really do any treatments much, you know, just need much. I just sit, keep attention to Muladhara Chakra really until until you get there. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, quick trick. Um, so mm. this interview, um, 
would be quite incomplete. And before I ask Shankarji to ask you building questions, um, the International Sahaj Public School where you um, made that songbook with the translation and everything, is there any miracles or experiences you wanted to share with us that happened to you? Because you spent quite some time there um, as a member of staff, as a volunteer, as a parent. Um, okay, well, uh, going back to Bromton Square again. Yes. <laughs> uh, while I was there, I mean, Shamataji had indicated that, you know, because I was a sort of educated person, you know, had a degree and stuff like that, you know, why why was I just, you know, doing building work and being a carpenter? You know? So, so she sort of in indicated I should do a bit more with one's education, you know. So I thought, oh, well, I could do teaching, you know. So I decided to apply for a teacher training course. And um, so I've been in the little back room behind the kitchen and I just filled out the uh, the form uh, for the teacher training. And mm -hmm. I walked into the kitchen and Shmatadi was in the kitchen. He said, oh, hello, what have you been doing? You've been sleeping? And I said, uh, no, Shmatadi, I've just been <laughs> Filling out this form for the teacher training. She said, Oh, okay, give it to me. So she took it from me and she gave it a band line and sort of looked as she did. You know, she used to kind of look into space and sort of give a band down. And then she kind of nodded and, and handed it back to me. And uh, I did the teacher training course, but I never took up training uh, teaching in England, partly because we were always busy building. <laughs> I mean, I think uh, I added it up one time. I think the total amount of time I spent working on humanity's building projects came to about seven years. If you added Maybe. it all together. Yeah. So, you know, and uh, that there were people who did more than me. I mean, Pat, and people, and uh, uh, John Watkins, and people like that. And uh, so, yeah, so she did, she did like to have the English there. Um, so I had to keep us busy, you know. Yes. So we didn't, didn't get into mischief, yeah. And, <laughs> I remember painting the um, Sri Chakra that we have uh, outside of the art art uh, block in the academic building at ISPS. You know, the different the, triangles and that square shape, the layers uh, of it. The one that's up on the on the on the roof, like under the roof. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We helped. You were doing it. We were there. Oh, you helped me paint. Me. Okay, yeah, because I did it up. I was thinking it probably needs renewing again. Yes, it probably does. If, if it's still there, you know. <laughs> it is yeah, still no, there. Oleg, uh, Oleg made that. But, I mean, we, he and I sort of worked on it together, yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah. That's good. So I've been making quite a few tree packers like recently. Hmm? What's the significance okay. of that yantra, please? Um, okay, I mean, I would still, I mean, I actually just, um, I think, we completed a book about it. Have <laughs> you? Sri Chakra. Yeah. yeah. And I've been making a few, actually, uh, sort of not very big ones, but like three-dimensional, sort of like, mm -hmm. sort of relief ones like that. So I uh, made a couple, one at Charlton Road, one here. Um, yeah, so it's got a lot of vibrations actually to work on it, you know, when you're doing it. So, I mean, yantras in general, uh, sort of the, the way the design works is that the outer bits are the sort of outer parts of us. So the square is, is the body and then the, the lotuses, the lo you know, are the, uh, the kind of the psyche, you know, the sort of, uh, usually there's eight petals in a yantra around the outside. So it's mm -hmm. like the five senses with the, you know, the, the mano, buddhi, and hamkara, you know, the mind, the yeah. you know, perception and the ego. You know. So that's that's the kind of internal mechanisms, you know, you can say, which you know translate the uh, the outer world to the to our consciousness. You know, that's the sort of what should you say, the pathways, you know. Right. Um so then and then as you go in, you become more and more subtle inside, you know. So the central dot is the formless God, you know, the Brahman, whatever, you know. But the, the whole design, the way symmetrical designs work is that they they take, they take focus you in, they bring your attention. If you just sit and stare at them, attention mm. eventually ends up in the center. 
which means technically you're becoming uh, connected with God. You know? um, and all the other stuff is kind of falling away, <laughs> the outer stuff. You know? Yes. So, um, but you can, you can, uh, you know, you can you can do puja. You can there's a sort of um, Nick Tomlinson. You know Nick Tomlinson, so yeah. Alice's dad. He's very keen on the Sri Chakra. So we did a lot of work together, and we, you know, did some Sri Chakra pujas where you you have uh, all the different names, the, the Kadgamala Stotram, and uh, you and you offer a bit of Akshata, you know, sort of sacred rice. Yeah. I mean, it's a game. And it's uh, definitely yeah. nice to do this because. I have no idea, and I'm the Indian. I should know it. <laughs> I know okay. it's a very powerful yantra, but the significance of it as a Sahaja Yogi, I mean, it's our, I mean, gratitude isn't adequate that Srimataji took this form, and all we have to do is look at her bindi, look at her photo, and go thoughtless and in meditation. But this yeah. importance of the Sri yantra, uh, sorry to interrupt, please carry on. <laughs> no, 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 that's fine. Um, yeah, anyway, I say I've been working on a book about it for many years and uh, just sort of printed off a copy of it. But uh, I still say that I'm, I wouldn't say I'm still 100% um, convinced that I <laughs> really understand it, you know, at all. It still seems a bit of a mystery. But Shumatiji was keen on it, you know, and she mentions it many times. I mean, you know, the Sri Chakra is on the you know, the left shoulder and the, and, and, Lalita and, and the Lalita chakra on the other side. So, yeah, you know, she spoke about those quite a few times and uh, yeah, indicated that we should learn more. You know, that somehow that she she once point talked about the the Sri chakra and said, "I I've got this big book actually, which I'll give you. You know, and it's got all these names in and stuff." And uh, and she mentioned something I can't remember quite. But something about, you know, sort of uh, like doing a puja, you know, Sri Chakra puja kind of thing, you know. So, um, so yeah, we try and follow, you know, what she said. Absolutely. Okay. I mean, to my mind, she always encouraged us to learn more, you know, to delve into things. You know, find, she kept saying, you know, find the connections between, you know, Christianity and thing or, or Jew Judaism or Islam, you know, Sahaja Yoga and you know, write books and <laughs> show people the connections. You know. So, uh, yeah. anyway, it's, um, I have to say, it's a very enjoyable occupation just to be free to spend your time meditating and researching on these kind of topics. You know what I mean, without any other sort of pressures, you know, really, <laughs> which is what I'm doing in India. Yeah. So uh, it's uh, a great blessing, undoubtedly. Yeah. Uh, it is. That. Shankarji, would you like to ask some uh, questions on buildings building, and building, building that you would <laughs> Well, actually, I was what I wanted to ask was um, I I can't. <clears throat> the reason I'm asking is I can't entirely remember. But <clears throat> have you been in a situation with Shamatji? In a building context or otherwise, where <clears throat> she's explaining something, <clears throat> where to position the staircase, where the wall should be, or or something, and you're sitting there as a as a tradesperson, craftsman, listening to her explanations and instructions, and and trying to catch up with her and thinking. Wow, is that is that going to work out? Maybe maybe that won't work, but then it it just it 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 does. It, I can't, yeah, is it going yeah, to a lot, a lot, lots of things spring to mind when you say that. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Um, no, there are many. I mean, sometimes she would say things like, you know, she had mirrored windows in, in Ealing, yeah. But they they were sort of like you know tinted. They looked tinted from the inside. You know? Well, mm. obviously, you know, to to us anyway. Obviously, that if a window if it reflects the light, well, it can't let all the light in, can it? Because it's reflecting some of it. <laughs> what do you mean? But uh, manager wanted she she was sure you could get ones that uh, would let all the light in but still be mirrored. You know? 
anyway, wow. we didn't we didn't find them. Yeah, and then you know there were things like at Ealing, for example. Uh, you know, there was uh, her kitchen. There was a room next to the kitchen, uh, which had like four doors in it, like a door in each wall, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> um, and uh, we thought, well, that doesn't work very well. But what we needed actually was a door into the kitchen so that, you know, we could bring in the food and stuff into the kitchen without coming through the front door, you know, came around the back and like that. So, we came, we thought it was good. And Shamataji herself suggested actually, yeah, actually, well, let's close off the door in the small room and make the window in the kitchen into a door. And then the small room becomes more useful and the kitchen has an entrance. So that's good. Yeah. So we did that. And then next time she came, she said, No, I don't think we want a door in the kitchen. We should we should make it back into make it into a window and make put the door in the small room. <laughs> and, uh, Anyway, so we nodded, went, yes, you know, but of course we, we didn't do it. <laughs> we kept it as it was. <laughs> but um, I think my, probably one, one of my favorite stories was the fact that um, we were working in the basement at, at Cabela and the, the walls in Cabela, I mean, the, the castle was a thousand years old, but the foundations were actually like 2000 years old. I mean, it was an old Roman, uh, castle originally mm -hmm. and then the, mm -hmm. the the present day castle had been built about a thousand years ago and then about 500 years ago it was turned into a kind of villa style with a roof instead of like four towers on the corners it was roofed over into the sort mm -hmm. of present style so the walls were literally five feet thick you know, mm -hmm. um, made of blocks of stone uh, you know two 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 and a half feet sort of cubes and stuff like this, massive things. And we'd had this experience where Yogi Mahajan had come into the basement and said, oh, we should turn that window into a door. Now that sounds very simple. All you have to do is remove the bit below the window to make it into a doorway, yeah? Mm. Well, two people worked on it for two weeks and then mm. and they still didn't manage to achieve it. A group mm. of... Uh, Sort of eight Swiss people came down with jackhammers for a weekend and, and hammered away at it, and they didn't achieve it. Wow. And eventually, myself and the other carpenter, Michiel, um, we we finally worked out that the answer was not to try and cut through the blocks at all, actually, but just to remove whole blocks and then just build back okay. you know, what, what, <laughs> what needed building back. You know. So so we did eventually get it done. So. Anyway, so we went to see Shamantaji and she said, and we, she was designing the kitchen in the basement and we've been working on it for quite a few days and she called us up, me, and uh, we had a, a Greek architect called Michaelis. And yes. um, so uh, quite often he and I would go up together, I'm not quite sure why I was included, but perhaps because Shamantaji knew that I kind of understood the way she worked better than he did, because you know, from experience. <laughs> Anyway, because like one example was, she managed to say we should put a piece of glass above this above the doorway because the door was doorway was like in the in the top floor was like eight feet high, so we didn't want the doorway door that high. So you put a piece of glass. So Michele said, so we'll make a frame and put some glass in it, she above the door. She said, no, no, just put a piece of glass. So and then he kind of kept saying, so with a frame. She said, no, <laughs> and he came out like really puzzled. He said. So do we have to make a frame to put the glass in? I say, no. What you do, you just fit a piece of glass into the wall and cement it in and right. plaster up to it. Yeah? yeah. He went, really? Can you do that? Yes, you can do that. <laughs> it's fine. No problem. We've done it many times before. You know? <laughs> it's, it's a very simple way of making a window. You just, you know, cement a piece of glass into the wall. Yeah. Know? No frame, nothing. Like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. yeah. It works. So mm -hmm. anyway, so Shimadji said one time we were thinking about the kitchen. She said, "What we need, we need a window in this kitchen. Yeah, it's too dark." Yeah. Which is interesting because she'd you know, never been down there, but she knew everything. So she'd say, uh, "She." So she said, she looked at the drawing. She said, "Make a window 
you need one about there. And she put her finger on the on the drawing. <laughs> and we looked and sort of gulped. Yes, my lady. She said, well, what's the problem? So she, I, she said, well, you know, the walls are like, you know, five feet thick. And she went, well, just have a look. You know. said, okay. <laughs> wow. So we went down to the kitchen and we started wow. hacking off the plaster in the wall where she, where yeah. she put her finger. Yeah. And after a while, we started to realize there was like a line of masonry, you know. <laughs> it's an old opening. Hacking. <laughs> and we wow. packed away, and sure enough, um, there was an old window there, yeah, which had been yeah. filled in and plastered over. Wow! Yeah, and Jeez. within within two hours, we had <laughs> pulled all the stuff out, <laughs> and we had a window. It was unbelievable. Yeah. You know, two hours, having spent you know a month trying to turn Yogi Mahajan's window into a door. <laughs> <laughs> so, Is that the door and the window that leads on to where they make pizzas in the basement? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Anyway, so, so the next day we, you know, go to see Shmetaji and she said, so uh, how did it work out with the window, you know? We said, <laughs> oh, funny thing, Shmetaji, you know, uh, just where you put your finger, it turned out there was actually an old window and uh, we opened it up and when we, there's a window there now. <laughs> she, she laughed, you know. <laughs> we had Remind a us which year, hmm? which year was this? Um, that would have been 1990. Hang on. The first year, love. Yeah, that year was Love Turn 1. Yeah, so he was... Uh, he spent his sort of strategy on his first birthday, actually, which was nice. Um, We'd made a cake. Well, tell us about so we, it, please. Well, uh, we'd made a cake for Love's birthday, and so we took it to the castle, to the palazzo, to sort of share with the Sajogis. And um, they said, well, why don't you give it to Shumataji, the cake? So we went, oh, OK. I haven't really thought of doing that, but we could. And no one had seen Shumataji for about a week, actually, because she'd been sort of unwell, maybe, possibly, anyway. And actually, she'd been sort of out of contact, really. So uh, so we did. So we went up with love, Radha and me and love. And uh, <clears throat> and she was there. And, and yeah, we sat at her feet and she talked a bit and she gave love some sweets. And uh, there was a glass of water. She had some, some letters on her table, you know, from Sajogis, whatever. And there was a glass of water and love sort of sat on her lap, I think. And he kind of knocked over the glass of water and it soaked all these letters. <laughs> so I'm kind of scrabbling around trying to find the cloth to sort of mop it up. She's going, no, no, it's fine. Just leave it, leave it. It's fine. Okay. So all these letters got kind of completely ruined, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or worked out in some way, anyway. Yes. Um, that was nice, yeah. So anyway, she, yeah, she spoke a bit. She said she was, you know, Happy to see her. So she hadn't seen anyone much for a week or so because she hadn't been well and she was uh -huh. feeling better and uh -huh. you know, sort of thanked us for coming, actually, which was very sweet. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Um, uh -huh. So, yeah, it was maybe half an hour or something. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, so, <clears throat> so, what were you going to say? Um, the staircase, I, wasn't it? There's a story with the staircase. A staircase. Well, there was a staircase leading from the dining room going up to the top floor. Yeah. And uh, Shumataji said we wanted. She wanted to make a staircase from her kitchen, which was next to the dining room, um, up to Cecilia's bathroom. Okay. Okay. That's okay, got you back, yeah, yeah. Got it back, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah that's fine. Right, up to the CP, it's all rather precarious. Anyway, up <laughs> to the CP bathroom, and uh, which was sort of at the top of the stairs, the other stairs. Yeah. And we yeah. sort of gulped and we kind of went, you know, uh, she said, what's the problem? So we kind of went, well, that staircase would cut through the other staircase, but not at a level where you could kind of combine the two. It would be like higher up than the other yeah. one. They wouldn't 
be able to work together. And she said, problem with you people, you know, is you, you only think in three dimensions. Wow. And we thought, well, I thought thinking in three dimensions was pretty clever, actually, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so she, uh, so Michaela, uh, she said, you have to think in four dimensions. So Michaela said to Shemati, what, what is the fourth dimension? Wow. And she said, it's, um, it's spirit. Wow. Fourth dimension is spirit. Wow. So, um, but we never actually managed to achieve that. Uh, <laughs> we did build a staircase just to see Pete's uh, bathroom, but he went from Chimataji's bedroom up to his bathroom yeah. instead. Like that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Wasn't it yeah, but Chimataji, that year, hmm? 19, that would be 1992, mm -hmm. Lock was one, yeah. So that year, so the first year Chimataji was there, you know, she, you know the story how she, you know, um, she found a place in Italy, you know, and then she, the Guru Puja was going to be there. And then about two weeks before, she, she found Cabello and she said, OK, we're not going to have it that other place. We're going to have it in Cabello. And oh. so everyone had two weeks to organize a Guru Puja with like 350 people coming. And um, But the interesting thing about the way she managed to arrange things was that if you work flat out, if you just, you know, did the best you could, like non-stop, whatever, mm. you could get it done. Wow. And uh, for some reason, that kind of total flat out kind of work carries more vibrations. You're much more open. You know, you, you can't think, you just got to get on with it mm. and just get on with it as much as you can. You know? yeah. I mean, there was a... We were getting, we were preparing the, the Hounslow ashram for Shemataji to move in. Uh, I don't know, was that 87, something like that? Mm. And um, so I remember Pat and I were there, wasn't too many other people, but um, Shemataji was coming on a certain day and we worked for three days uh, without sleeping, you know, two nights we didn't sleep actually. We worked continuously for three days. <laughs> Wow. Um, yeah, and during the daytime, I would like go shopping and get all the materials, whatever we needed, and then we'd have dinner, and then then we'd start work, do the night shift, you know. Wow. <laughs> and we'd work through till like maybe six o'clock, and we'd stop, have an hour meditation, some breakfast, maybe a little short rest, you know, and then start work again. But you can only do that when the vibrations are supporting you. Mm. You, know, you can't you can't decide I'm going to do it because it won't you know mm. you can't actually. So mm. we did that and then uh, and we got it ready. And Shemataji came and it was all ready and she moved in and we left and then we went and stayed with John Watkinson actually who had a flat quite nearby in Hounslow and uh, slept for about a week. You know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, we did a lot of things. I mean, there was this, you know, this story. I mean, there's a quite a long story about Shemataji moving to Ealing. Um, Tell us about it, please. Okay, well, Shemataji and Sisipi, you know, they lived at Shooty Camps um, mm -hmm. from about, you know, I mean, on and off. Uh, because uh, you know, that Shruti Council was bought by the collective, you know, collective. Yes. Shemataji was About half of the money came from the UK and the other half from the rest of the world. And they bought this house as a gift for Shemataji. And she lived there. And there was the CP. And when the CP retired in 1989, he spent a year just living at Shruti Camps, actually, and uh, mm. uh, to write his book about Lal Bahudu Shastri. So... I was uh, fortunate enough, I was free at that time. So I actually also stayed at Trudy Camps uh, mm -hmm. for that year. And yeah, I used to drive him around and he would actually, you know, proofread some of his book and that sort of thing, you know. So it was nice. It was good. And I was I had some building work as well. We were building a little extension on the back of the house. Some mm -hmm. of that. So, um, Any memorable moments? That's, Any particular that's, a whole, moment? that's a whole other story. Hmm? Well, 
what happened was Shimatsuji had been uh, everywhere she went, you know, for the 20 years she'd been in England, you know, she had uh, mm -hmm. she collected stuff from every country she visited. So she went to Spain, she'd buy sort of carved Spanish oak furniture or something. She went to Japan, you know, she'd buy Japanese vases and you know, she had like a hundred tea sets and um, got a huge collection of furniture. Trudy Camps was it was a big house and it uh, had a massive attic which stretched the whole length of the building. So, you know, it was maybe, you know, sort of, uh, I don't know, seven or eight meters wide and, and maybe 50 meters long of them. It's a very big attic. <laughs> and it was absolutely jam packed full of stuff. Mm -hmm. And the year before, um, there'd been a team of people, uh, about sort of eight, eight or ten of us, it included Steve Jones and Nick Burin and uh, Paddy Martin, myself and Chris Flatman and, you know, a few other people. And Shimatiji would come for a couple of weeks and stay at Shooty Camps and we'd all go up. And we'd bring everything down from the attic, all the artifacts, you know, not the big furniture, but the, you know, the tea sets and the paintings and the sculptures and whatever it was. And we'd bring it all down and she'd look at it and then we'd wrap it in tissue paper and bubble wrap and put it in tea chests, you know, ready to ship to India. Mm. So that was very nice. And we had, I don't know, maybe five, I think five sessions of a couple of weeks, you know, where she would come and we'd spend the days to, sitting on the balcony or going between the balcony and, and the attic, you know, sort of bringing stuff up and down. Steve Jones wow. decided that he was going to stay close to the Shimatajis, so he would sit right next to the Shimatajis chair, sort of, we started at work at eight o'clock every morning, so at 10 to eight, he'd be sat next to the Shimatajis chair, and he didn't move the whole day, he would just stay there. <laughs> <laughs> we were all coming and going, but he sat there and just sort of wrapped, you know, wrapped things and he you know, didn't miss a word she said, you know. <laughs> uh, it was quite funny because she would talk about the artifacts and things, you know, and you think you've got an idea like what was good art, you know, what, what was nice, you know. So I remember finding a big vase and it was really brightly coloured and I thought, oh, she matters you'll like this one, you know, it's really like, you know, ebullient kind of, you know, and sort of, you know, quite striking, you know. So I carried it down and sort of showed it to strategy and she went, oh, what's that horrible thing? No, we, we can throw that away. <laughs> <you know." laughs> I thought, Brilliant. No, I still haven't got it. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, brilliant. Yeah. Uh, somebody showed her this uh, death, death mask of William Blake. Yes. Well, you've seen it. You've seen it. Yeah, sort of dark coloured like. I heard about it. Yes. Yeah. It's quite famous. You know, um, you can get, you can buy them, I think, you know. Copies yes. Yeah. So she went, oh, what's that? It's Plato or something. And so she said, no, actually, it's, uh, it's William Blake's like death mask. She went, oh, let me have a look. So she took it. She looked at it quite a few seconds. And she shook her head and then said, poor man, see how they made him suffer. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So uh, mm -hmm. but we had lots of interesting... <laughs> <laughs> anecdotes. I mean, there was one man, he was a Sikh man, who, who I knew quite well, actually, and he was uh, he was a nice chap, but a little bit simple, maybe. Anyway, he had decided that uh, he was going to kind of try and convert all the Sikhs to Sahaja Yoga. So he went to a, a meeting of like 300 Sikhs in the Sikh Gurdwara, where some big kind of Sikh guru was going to come and talk. And before this guru arrived, he stood up at the front and he said, Hey everyone, look, forget this guru guy. Look, Shimataji is the real thing, you know, we should all do Sahaja Yoga and whatever. So, as you can imagine, he got incredibly caught up from doing that. <laughs> he was really in a bad state. So, Shimataji called into Shudi Camps. So, he sat on the balcony outside her room for like four days or something. And uh, Shimataji sort of kept saying, she, you know, maybe I'll see him tomorrow, you know. He just kept sitting there. I think it was about a week, actually, in the end. But anyway, and um, eventually um, she she called him in, you know, and 
I was on the balcony, on the, uh, the, the sort of uh, balcony outside her room, and I saw him go in, and uh, and he was standing in the doorway with his sort of hand on the, still with his hand on the door handle, and and Shumatiji started shouting at him, and he stood there as if he was in a hurricane. He was like being kind of blown um, like backwards and forwards like this, and he was shaking, and, you know. And uh, Shumatiji just blasted him and shouted at him for about five minutes. I mean, a long time, you know, sort of non-stop. And, uh, and so then, and then he then he went and he went off and he slept for about two days. <laughs> <laughs> Exhausting. Yeah. And mm -hmm. when he woke up, yeah, I mean, it is actually, I mean, if you get caught up and you clear out, it is actually very tiring, yeah. You need to rest, you know, you need time. To clear out, yeah, and uh, he was better. He still wasn't really okay, but um, mm. but I remember once it was wasn't that time. I think it was uh, one of my the first one of the first public programs I I went to. I uh, at the end of the program, she managed she was on stage and people were queuing up to sort of see her and give her flowers and things. You know? So um, so I thought, oh, I'll go and have a close look. So I went and sat up right at the front, just so I could sit there and just watch her, you know, and, and see. Her. And this Indian family came in front of her, um, and she she started shouting at them, you know, and and she was she was sort of waving her finger and she was like shouting, being really cross with them, like it's angry, you know. And then she turned, looked at me, and gave a big wink, like that. And then carried on shouting at them. I mean, I really like, <laughs> just fell off my chair. Like what? You know, she just you know, sort of turned and sort of gave a quick, quick wink, you know, right, and then carried on shouting. At them. Oh. Uh, another oh, time, she was she was shouting at somebody uh, like that, and she she turned to me and said, "You know, I have to do this to scare the boots away." And then carried on shouting. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So yeah, she knew. But in the, I mean, people tell stories. I wasn't around, but people tell stories of the early days where some of these TM people were really possessed. I mean, they were growling like tigers, and Shumatiji had her foot mm -hmm. on their centre heart. They were on the, on the ground, kind of screaming <laughs> and wailing, and oh never experienced God. any of that, you know. But uh, she, she knew how to deal with uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> how to deal with the boots, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry, we keep going off tangents, don't we? But, um... <laughs> but that's that's the beauty of it. I mean, <laughs> dramaturgy, the experiences yeah. of dramaturgy um, that you have. Yeah, uh, anyway, uh... I actually was just, no, sorry. I just realized I was only halfway through the story about the luggage and the, all the stuff in shooting camps. Yeah. Yes. Because yes. the next year, dramaturgy didn't come very much to shooting camps, and so CP was there writing his book. And uh, she would come, you know, a few days. I mean, maybe three or four times. And that was about all we saw of her. She was traveling the world. She was doing like Russia tours and South America tours, and you know, goodness knows what. Um, and this was what 1918, 1990, the year before Cabela, I guess. Yeah, started maybe or two years before. Um, so. But the but the CP they were going to go back you know shift back to India officially so the CP as a diplomat was allowed to return to India and bring with him his personal possessions yeah uh -huh. so so they started uh, so they ordered they got a packing company and this company came and they you know their truck would come and it would bring a container you know you no know, containers like eight foot square and twenty foot long and um, they. Started this company. They had a few guys who came, and they were uh, a very nice team, actually. And Shumatiji had told Nita um, to, to cook them all lunch every day. So the first day, she cooked them uh, Indian food. So they um, so they ate it very politely and said, "No, thank you." So the next day, she said, "Oh, lunch is ready." And they went, "Actually, I think we're going to go down the calf." You know, we'll see. <laughs> she said. No, I, I've made you kind of uh, like bacon, eggs, sausages, and beans. Wow. And they went, oh, okay, great. Thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> so she, every day she cooked them, you know, sort of English breakfast style, you know, lunch like that. 
And uh, they were really nice guys, you know. And she actually, she actually mentioned about them. And she said they were just like side yogis, you know, so sweet guys, very innocent, and, uh, like gunners, you know, sort of just doing the work. You know. Anyway, so they, they loaded up. So then they'd load, you know, fill a container and then that would be taken away and the truck would bring a new one. And so, you know, we got up to about 10 container loads. Wow. And so CP is getting a little bit jumpy and going, <laughs> 10 container loads, it's like, too much doesn't look you know, <laughs> doesn't yeah. look very good. I'm returning to India. This is my personal oh, possession. You know, Ten <laughs> container load. So you know we really need to sort. Of, that's it. We we have to stop. You know. So it's Chris Flatman uh, sort of telephone strategy. Strategy to CP says you know ten is enough and we have to stop. And strategy says you know, no, don't don't listen to him. Don't worry what he says. Just carry on, carry on. You know. <laughs> so they carried on. So. <laughs> And then you know, we got up to like 15 container loads, you know. Ooh. And so CP's like, that's really it. I mean, we can't possibly take more than this. You know, it's just got it's got to be the end, you know. Wow. <laughs> so Chris Batman rings strategy, you know, strategy, uh the CP is getting very nervous and uh, he wants, you know, thinks that's enough. He said, no, 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 just carry on, keep going, keep going. It's all gotta go. Put it on, you know. Oh. So eventually it was 21 container loads. Oh <laughs> amazing. And it was all it was all shipped to India. Oh, so when it arrived, when it arrived in India at Mumbai, what the customs people decided to do was to keep it all sealed and take it to Protestant. And they went with it. And they sat there for two or three weeks, however long it was, while each container was unsealed, opened, and the contents were brought out, you know. And, um, yeah, I mean, strategy, you know, furnished uh, Pakistan with, with all that stuff. I mean, we had, uh, we'd bought a lot of books, for example, you know. Um, one day, strategy had said, uh, we should go to Cambridge and, and buy some books. So we went, no, oh, best strategy. Oh. So we got in the car, and so CP, strategy in the back, myself and uh, an Australian leader in the front. <laughs> We drove off to Waterstones in Cambridge oh, and wow. thinking, you know, buy some books. I didn't, you know, a few books, I thought, you know. So anyway, so she managed to come along and she said, there'll be a shelf of like Somerset more. So she said, well, take those. And we said, sorry, she managed to yeah, take those. What, all of them? Yeah, yeah, all of them, you know. So we just, wow. we take whole shelf loads, you know, all of Somerset more mm -hmm. all of AJ Cronin, all of, Cronin, you know, yeah. Conan Doyle and sort of, you know. Mm -hmm. Do you like John Goldsworthy as well? You you probably never read, but he's actually a good writer, you know. Uh, yeah. And, you know, lots of classics and stuff like this. And, and the idea was, you know, that our guest rooms, you know, would have bookcases so that the guests would always have something to read. Wow. And she loved kind of, you know, P.G. Woodhouse and uh, sort of Three Men in a Boat and stuff like that, you know, yes. sort of humorous <laughs> stuff. Um so we were piling all these books up, you know, on the counter, thinking, oh, they'll be really happy that, you know, we're buying so many books. But yeah. but their faces are getting longer and longer, and they're looking very kind of worried, you know. And oh, wow. sort of, what, what's the problem, you know? And they say, well, how are you going to pay for all this stuff? Ah. Said, oh, okay, fine, don't worry. So I go off to find the CP. <laughs> and I say, so um, they're just wondering how we're going to pay for the... Uh, all these books. And he says, oh, okay. So he comes down to the desk and he, he pulls out his, his wallet and he opens it up and there's like a big flap and it comes down and there's like 24 major credit cards. <laughs> 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 21, <laughs> so, uh, it's good. Card. So, and he says, you know, will will any of those do? You know, and they went, oh, <laughs> fine, thank you, thank you. <laughs> So we, packed in, we all got packed in boxes, and uh, it was also amazing because the, the Mercedes had a big boot, and actually the boxes kind of stacked in, and they just stacked in, like with one box left over, like perfectly in the boot, and just managed to close it, and the, and the extra box went in the front like with the Australian leader, you know, <laughs> and um, so a lot of books, and. Um, uh, for example, Shimatiji wanted a lot of oak. She she really liked American white oak for some reason. Um, we used a lot of it. We made the staircases in Cabela from American white oak. And she wanted to take a lot of it to uh, to Protestant to make doors and things, yeah. So um, 
because I knew a, a guy, an importer actually, uh, who you know gave us a really good deal and allowed us to go and sort of fish through his collection, um, you know, pick out the good stuff. You know, you wouldn't you didn't just have to take what he gave you. He would actually let us go and select, you know, all the good planks and stuff like that. So because it was to make doors, it all had to be in seven foot and three foot lengths. So we made these crates. Humanity had bought a lot of quite cheap kind of oil paintings that were quite big, you know, maybe four foot by three foot or something, you know, um, in, you know, goldy frames and sort of daubed on kind of rather gauche kind of <laughs> oil paintings. Um, again, but I mean, she just wanted something to decorate you know, with. You know. So what we do is we make crates out of these, uh, out of this two inch thick uh, oak, you know, which um, the, the paintings were put in. So the paintings weighed about, you know, maybe five kilos and, and the oak crates weighed about 200 <laughs> kilos. You know. but, the point was that they, you know, that they were crates to hold paintings. I mean, if it was just a lot of timber, then you say, well, this isn't really your personal possession. This is some building material, you know what I mean? But because we made them into something, you know, if they passed as being, uh, you know, acceptable as a personal property, you know, when they got to India. Yeah. Yeah. So, practical wasn't i mean yeah yeah amazing. i mean she, yeah. can't even kind of think how things possible no she, she always liked you know she liked to think i mean for example with building work she liked to think well can we maybe we can fit in an extra floor you know maybe we can fit you know three floors in the space of two or <laughs> something like that so at ealing she wanted to put <laughs> four floors in the space of three well we were sort of working it out. Well, each ceiling will only be like just over two meters. That that's not high enough. You know, you can't have a room that low. You know, and we puzzled about it for a while, and eventually, sort of, the penny dropped, and you realised that we were trying to fit, keep the top floor where it was. You know I mean, and fit the other ones in between. But if we raise the top floor up yeah. uh, a couple of feet, yeah. yeah. Then you actually had enough space, and yeah. you could you could make the ceiling in the top room. You could push it up into the ceiling, yeah. into the roof a bit. So it's like, you know, okay, okay, yeah, we can do it. Yes, you know, sort of. Uh, so you had to kind of think about it or not think about it, whatever. You know. um, yeah, I mean, I remember once strategy was ordering. She wanted to order some oak for the staircase, and she said uh, in Cabela. So she said, um, she said, how, how big is it? And I said, oh, it's going to be this by this by this. So she went, she kind of worked it out. So she said, it's like, so it's going to be two inches thick and uh, four feet long and, and what by, by 10 meters or something. You know. So she was multiplying like inches by feet by meters, you know. So she said, so we need about 40 cubic feet of wood. And I kind of gulped, you know, and she said, I said, do you mind if I work it out my way? She said, no, no, you do it your way. It's fine. You know. So I sat down and converted everything in properly into feed and, you know, et cetera, et cetera, and got it worked out. And it came out exactly the same figure. <laughs> and so she said, so what do you get? I said, uh, I, yeah, 40, 40 cubic feet. <laughs> she went, okay. I still have no idea. How she managed I, to do it. I've tried to work yeah. it out. Like, if you multiply inches yeah. by feet by meters, it still doesn't give you the right <laughs> answer. But she <laughs> she got the right yeah. answer somehow. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah she, she would do yeah. that. Uh, yeah. I remember that, that that's what prompted my initial question to you about, have you ever sat with her and she's come up with something and you're trying to figure it out? That was yeah, the story. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, that, that happened, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. A few times. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. No, we had a lot of uh, we had a lot of fun. Yeah, on the building. <laughs> Any hilarious yeah. moments? Uh, it was very joyful and effervescent in the physical presence of Shramataji. Yeah. I mean, okay. I mean, building. I have to say, building wise, I mean. You know, it was sort of, you know, 11 hours a day, seven days a week. Yeah. 
so you were kind of fairly tired. I mean, yeah. Pat used to sort of say, it would be really nice, you know, once we could actually, you know, get enough rest so that we weren't just totally exhausted all the time. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but he, Pat told a story about how they visited humanity once in the early days, and they'd all been up sort of all night, sort of, you know, going to a disco or something. And uh, when they arrived, you know, she mentioned, she said, oh, well, that's interesting. You're, when you're tired, you absorb vibrations better. Oh. And Pat thought to himself, don't think that's good news somehow. <laughs> <laughs> so, because humanity kept us tired, you know, all the time. I mean, we would have music programs till four o'clock in the morning and then get up, up the next day for puja, you know, and you'd be sitting there completely like... <laughs> Oh man, but that was the point. You weren't thinking; you were open, you know. So, so again, so the building, you know, you you were kind of constantly exhausted, you know. Um, but that, I guess, made you good channels for vibrations. And Shimataji always bought buildings where every single thing needed to be fixed, you know. So you know, from the very roots, the foundations, you know, every bit of plaster, every piece of wood, the plumbing, the electrics, everything got fixed, which meant it got vibrated, you know, so that yes. so she never bought anything that, that didn't need total renovation. <laughs> um, yeah. Shooty camps actually looked pretty good when it was bought, but the people who before us, who we bought it from, had actually bought the house, so it's sort of falling down, and they just covered up everything everything that was bad and tarted it all up and painted everything so it sort of looked quite smart they actually had this paneling in one of the rooms which um we weren't allowed to remove because it was old paneling and it was you know sort of uh, you know listed building something or other you know but we thought well i don't know we've got to go it's got to go actually because it's just but when we took it off it was made out of old tea chests you know so it, wasn't, it wasn't old at all you know they just knocked it out quick because it covered up because the wall was totally damp and rotten you know and uh, this this paneling uh, covered up <laughs> all, the, all the rot you know so shooty camps was another one and uh Elon, completely rotten house i mean uh it used to be number 13 and had quite a bad history actually and had been lived in by squatters and when the squatters had been evicted they turned all the taps on and left the water running when they went and it just rotted out all the floors and the huts and uh, so again everything had to be renewed rebuilt mm. like that Cabela mm. was huge and um, yeah the Geneva house I never worked on the Geneva house but that was also a ruin pretty much I think and she managed to it yeah so like in those days the pujas were very important as you're saying so you're working flat out and then you're going for a puja to shamataji and it's just in a different dimension shamataji is there in person now looking back because now there's lots of uh, discussions about ritualism and stuff like that how does that sort mm. of go with that in retrospect um Right, I'm not quite sure really, but I still have this feeling that those pujas are still working out through us. Yes. That the, the effects of them is still going on, you know. But um, yeah. I mean, that the first, that second year, strategy cancelled everything. She just stayed in Cabela. She she cancelled all the tours and the programs and everything. Just stayed in Cabela, and directed the building works and you know saw us kind of every day pretty much um yeah, and then we had all the pujas in Cabela. Yeah. i think the first adi shakti puja was that year was it uh, i think so and yeah and she actually said this is historic because this is really the first puja where you're actually just worshiping me as myself not as yeah. an aspect but actually like that so that certainly felt uh, historic, you know, and uh, very important, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, uh, I mean, the mayor, the mayor of Cabela was, 
It was a nice chap, actually. The first time I arrived in Cavallo, sort of stepped off the bus from the UK, and the mayor was standing there, and, and he shook our hand, and he said, welcome to Cavallo. But wow, wow. Things, things have changed, you know. <laughs> Not used to being very popular, you know, sort of in places we went to. And uh, <laughs> but that was great, yeah. But he said to Shimataji, he said, you know, what do you do to your followers? I mean, they sit there for like five, six hours, you know, just <laughs> people doing nothing. We we can't sit half an hour in church without, you know, looking at our watch and trying to get out. You know? <laughs> so, uh, but it, yeah, it, we did, didn't we? I mean, you know, pujas were long and you just, <clears throat> they were long enough that you you were just in them, you know, you weren't, you know, waiting for them to finish or anything. You, there was no sense of sort of, you know, being near the beginning or near the end. You, you were just in it, uh, just being there. Yeah. And I, I wouldn't say I ever really enjoyed a puja. Um, some people went out, wow, the puja was amazing. I enjoyed it so much. I go, really? Okay. <laughs> no, I would you stop, <laughs> just, you sat there sort of, you know, not exactly uncomfortable, but you know, sort of trying to keep your attention and you know, absorbing the vibrations and you know, sort of I don't know. It was, uh, okay. I mean, there were some, there were some at we, the end, after at the end of the puja, you know, you, there would mm -hmm. be a joy and you get up and you dance. And, and, and but actually, during the pujas, well, not really, you just try and keep your attention. Where it, it should be. be hard work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, um, was there any um, occasion that you might remember or want to share where you were caught up in the Branti and then you came out of it? The illusion, the Mahamaya. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it happened several times on small scales. Well, yeah, I mean, that was all the time, isn't it? I mean, it's, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, I remember what Shimataji once she described thinking as anti god activity. Wow, <laughs> amazing! I think, yeah. Well, yeah, um, which kind of it is in a way, but obviously, you know, don't do it with any sort of <laughs> bad intention, you know? we do, it just mm. happens, doesn't it? You know. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Amazing. But when you're thinking, yeah, you're you're in the Maya, aren't you? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's yeah. only when you're thoughtless that you're not in it. And uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm a terrible sort of planner. You know, I'm always thinking about what I'm going to do. You really. um, <laughs> know, I don't, I don't think, I don't think about the past much. I don't think about other people very much. I'm an extremely selfish person. You know, I just <laughs> think about. What I want to do, <laughs> what I'm going to do, um, yeah. And yeah. So, uh, yeah. Is there any sort of advice that Shamatsu gave you that you would like? Yeah, to share? she gave me some advice about marriage. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> Tell us about it. Well, like, the whole marriage thing is quite interesting. Um, I've been in Saj Yoga about seven years. Yeah. Uh, I was married before um, Sahaja Yoga, and uh, my wife that came into Sahaja Yoga, but Shumatiji arranged for us to uh, not be together <laughs> yeah. by uh, sending her off to run the school in Rome, Rome Ashram. And um, so we didn't really know what was happening, really, because Shumatiji had kind of separated us like that. So, uh, Eventually, so she said, "Yeah, well, better forget it." Right. So, um, so sometime later, she sort of—I happened to be in her bedroom for some reason at Shuli Camps, and uh, I've been doing some work. And she said, "Oh, we should get you married." And I went, uh, mm -hmm. "Just whatever, whatever you want, Shemajid." You know. <laughs> she said, "She went. Hmm. Problem is, you're very tall." And. Uh, <laughs> And she said, hmm, tall women have a lot of ego. Ah. And she said, actually, all all tall people have a lot of ego. <laughs> just, just a minute. <laughs> Oops. <clears throat> she said, anyway, um, don't worry, yeah. And she sort of, again, she sort of looked into space a bit and sort of went, 
<laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it's kind of, it'll be okay, you know. Mm, brilliant. Uh, okay, thank you, Shumanji. <laughs> so, uh, so, um, we, so we went on India tour that year, and um, this is... actually I got, I got paired up with a, an Australian lady uh, first, who was quite strange lady, and, but she didn't actually want to talk to me, so that was kind of, uh, <laughs> turned out for the best, really. So we forget that one. But then a bit later on, uh, marriage was announced with, with Radha, you know. And uh, so mm. uh, that was at uh, Brahmapuri. Do you know oh. that place? Uh, 1985? Uh, no, no, this is 1990. Oh, okay, 1990. Well, January, January 1990. Well, it's probably, just, may have been December 89. Anyway, that point. Anyway, so... Mm. At the end of the uh, Yogi Mahajan used to be in charge of the sort of marriage forms and stuff at that point. So at the end of the announcements, I sort of went up to Yogi and said, "Can I can I see the you know, the, the form of the, of the you know, who I matched to?" And he said, "Yeah, that's right." And he kind of showed it to me for about three seconds and went, "Okay, that's it." <laughs> So it's got a brief glimpse of, uh, of Radha. Well, you know what it's like in India when they take photographs, you know, they don't smile, it's all like, you know, they just stare yeah, straight yeah, up. Yeah. And uh, yeah. so somebody went, Oh, how do you look? And I went, um, She looks quite serious, you know. <laughs> so, that's all we knew, you know. But uh, anyway, so when we got to Ganafati Pule, they had a session where the, um, the the couples, the men would come up on Shumataji's left side for some reason, and the women on the right. And they'd come and sort of kneel in front of Shumataji, and then they would sort of sort of nod, approve or whatever, everyone would clap and you know, be great, you know. And then they'd go back again. You know. So my name got called. So I go up and I'm sitting next to Shumataji. And uh, Radha appears on the other side of the corner of the stage, but she doesn't come towards Shumataji. She's just sort of standing there looking extremely nervous with next to Baba Mama. So Baba Mama is, is talking to her in Marathi, which she doesn't understand because she's from Kerala, you know, so. <laughs> and she is, I, mean, I didn't know at the time, but apparently she had just got off the bus from Bombay. She's like, you know, it just got off, made it into the camp, walking into the camp, and somebody said, you're needed on stage, you know, and she's like totally sweaty and sort of, you know, destroyed from the, from a, a sort of 12 hour journey from Mumbai. you know. Mm. And uh, so she doesn't know what's going on, you know, so she's standing there just looking really kind of like nervous. And so, and uh, Shumataji says, you know, she's, she's very dark, you know. Like, oh, fine, Shumataji, you know, it's not a problem. You know? and, um, and she said, yeah. I think she is saying yes, but but very slowly. <laughs> she went, yeah, it'll be okay. She said, yeah, fine, you know. So I left the stage and Radha left, but nobody knew what had happened because she hadn't come to Shumataji. There hadn't been any sign that we'd agreed or accepted. So, you know, nobody applauded because nobody knew kind of what was going on anyway. <laughs> so I went I went and sat back down in the audience and there was a group of Russian ladies behind me and they tapped me on the shoulder and said, Don't worry, we find you nice Russian wife. You know <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I said, no no I think it's gonna be okay. You know, it's gonna be okay. <laughs> yeah. So actually so she managed to call Radha up actually and sort of Told her off of it. Says, "Why, why don't you like this marriage? You know, he's a good man." You know, so, uh, he went, "No, no, I, I do like Shmanji. You know, it's okay." <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> he went ahead, but uh, yeah. Mm. Anyway, the rest was, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, sorry, we're still jumping around at tangents, aren't we? Here, <laughs> no, but that's very good. Please carry on. I can't on. remember. What we're talking about? What were we talking about before then? Marriages. Shumashi's advice on marriage to yeah. you. Oh, that is my marriage. All right. So actually, yeah. Sorry, when I was in her bedroom, she gave me some advice on marriage, which was very useful indeed, and mm -hmm. I think should be uh, perhaps uh, accepted by everybody. <laughs> perhaps she said, "Don't criticize." 
Wow. Well, she knows me, of course. I'm a very critical person, you know, criticize one. <laughs> so, uh, but, you know, we all do, don't we, to a certain extent? Absolutely. So, oh, yeah. anyway, it was very, well, it was probably the best advice, really. Yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, Is there anything else I'd like to share before we conclude this interview? It's been absolutely amazing. <laughs> well, there's lots of things I could talk about. Um, yeah, we haven't talked about Chelsea Road. Actually, maybe we could do that as a, another session, Chelsea yes. Road in particular. Yeah, it's true. Yes, you arranged uh, you know, how that was arranged, yeah. Mm. And uh, no, there were other, yeah, times, experiences. Um, and musically, you, we haven't touched oh, yes, on your... We haven't touched on the music. We haven't touched on you your... And... your um, Berber for Bajan singing and guitar strumming and and uh, yeah. the, 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 the back tea, <laughs> which is the re yeah. release after sitting in the puja. Is a puja is going to be quite hard work, but when you get into the Bajans, it the joy starts to really flow and yeah, you, yeah, you, no, because. We, uh... yeah. I think the first, I mean, the English bhajan singing was was a very uh, motley affair. In the days. <laughs> I, mm. I've been making songbooks actually since, you know, my first India tour. I thought we need, you know, song sheets to sing from, you know, on my first India tour was 1984, you know, um, nice. March, March, February of March of my, 1984. So I printed up some sheets and uh, it was like, Four sides of A4, you know, sort of folded into a booklet. That was that was our total repertoire of, of songs, <laughs> <by Germany. laughs> you know, mm -hmm. half of which were, you know, Marathi. So we had things like Hey Adi Ma and uh, Ami Mata Jinta Charanasi Alo um, and uh, Ami Bigad and mm -hmm. uh, some of those songs, Marathi ones mostly, yeah. And then some English ones as well. Um, so, yeah, but we, we weren't very good, but, uh, then, <laughs> what year was that? Anyway, 1980, I don't know, later, maybe eight, seven or eight, I can't remember the year. Um, Shakuntala came to UK and she taught us, uh, she taught us how to sing bhajans properly, how to pronounce the Marathi and the Hindi. And we oh. practiced two songs for the uh, Sri Hanuman Puja in Margate. Oh, okay. yes. yes. And we, we did the, the Hanuman Chalisa mm. and the, the Hanuman Stuti, you know, Anjani Chiasutta Tularama Tavarama And we yeah we got those off pretty well actually, and we performed them on the Saturday night. And Shimataji was very pleased, and she said, "You must do these in the puja as well the next day." So, oh well, thank you, Shimataji. That's great. So that's the first time I really remember Shimataji actually being pleased with the English uh, bhajan singing. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, we had a bit of expert help there. Yeah, it was very good. Yeah. Mm. But, uh, I mean, the whole Bajan thing took off. I mean, the, the Swiss music group, you know, led by those Ector Para Order brothers, um, they studied how the, the Indians sang Bajans and they, they copied it. They, you know, they got the pronunciation, they got the hand movements and the sounds and everything. And it just transformed Bajan singing um, in the whole of Sanjog. You know. uh, it's amazing, yeah. So, I mean, I was listening to, you know, the Nirmalites. They're, yes. um, yeah, okay. My, my son in law, as it turns out, happens to be one of them. And, um, but I, mean, I was listening to some music that uh, a guy in the ashram was playing uh, a couple of days ago. And I, think, I said, Is this the Pune music group? And he said, No, this is the Nirmalites, actually. 
And you thought, wow. wow, it really does sound authentic. You know, it sounds like real Indian music. Mm. You know, very, very good. So, yeah, we've come a long way since the early days. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, she managed to put up with it. You know, she appreciated our efforts to, <laughs> to sing. <laughs> We at least we were doing it from the heart, even if we weren't very good at it, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, so she always wanted us to sing, you know. She yeah. liked that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the early days, we did a lot of. There was usually a lot more of the Western music. I mean, it's not very popular now, for some yeah. reason. But um, I really like those the Western devotional songs, you know, people nice devotional songs and there was always space for them to perform you know on the friday or saturday night music programs mm -hmm. um, so, uh, really yeah. really nice talking to you chris so chris right. so we've we gone back to gone back to dharmashala <laughs> <laughs> so yes we, as somebody said everyone's been elevated to the knighthood <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so um, we we should regroup for another session because just just this one is perhaps a warm up uh, uh, to trigger memories. Um, more yeah. later we will. Touch. No, I'm sure. Yes, there is. I mean, social modes another story. Social mode, yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah, and uh, plenty of other stories. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of historic ones. Yeah. We'd okay. like to. Th Great. Thank you, Shakti, and I yeah. thank you so much yeah. for joining Shakti. us this evening. Oh, it's been very enjoyable. Yeah, no, it's great. Yeah, it's good. Should, uh, we should come down and see you guys. Oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, so we haven't got much time left. But, uh, no. How are you not that far away? What is it, like, hour and a half? Or something? Just, um, yeah, about 10 miles south of Maidstone, Mid Kent. Right. Okay. But I mean, how long does it take you to drive into North London? Oh, well, I was in London this morning. I was in Marble Arch and I'm looking at a damp, oh. damp um, um So, um, OK, right, to get into North London, we've probably got a public transport, hour and, hour and a half. Yeah, yeah. Half to get to Kilburn, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Is it yeah. close to the street? Actually, I've got a job. We've got some jobs coming up in on Kilburn High Road at some point. But, but building, refurbishment and oh. stuff. So. Okay. Yeah. I'm going away. to pause the I'll pop up. Yeah. I'm going to stop yeah. recording. Stop recording, you. sure. Yeah, yeah. Both get disconnected, <laughs> but we'll stop recording. Thank you so much for joining us on this very auspicious yeah, occasion. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, love well. regards to you. Yeah. And Radha Yeah, lovely, yeah. lovely story. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Take care. Okay. Okay. Right.